Welcome everyone to my Throne of Eldraine limited set review. Uh, my name is Eric and I'm going to be taking you today through all the red cards. Last time we looked at all the black cards and next time we'll look at all the green cards. So again I'm going to be using the limited resources uh, uh, ranking system with A being the very best in the set and F being the very worst unplayable stuff in the set. So without further ado let's get started. <clears throat> First one is Barge In for a single red. It's an instant at common. Target attacking creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Each attacking non-human creature gains trample until end of turn. So this one you really want to be in the non-human deck. Red is kind of in that awkward spot where like half of the creatures are non-human and the other half are, are human knights. So there's kind of that um, like awkward uh, middle ground that you're treading. So, like, hopefully some of your creatures are at least non-human when you play this card, because you want to get the boost of the, the trample. Plus two, plus two to an attacker. For a single red, eh, it's not the best, but it does have upside. So this one, I think, is... I mean, you really want to be in the non-human deck, and you're not always going to be doing that in the red deck, if you're red. So, um, I'm going to give this a... Eh, I don't know... I, You'll probably cut this card more often than not, so I'm probably gonna give this a I'm gonna give this a D plus. Next up we got Blood Haze Wolverine. It's one in a red for a creature Wolverine at common. It's a two one. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, Blood Haze Wolverine gets plus one plus one and gains first strike until end of turn. So this is a decent common payoff for the draw your second card each turn deck, um, which is is uh, solidly in red blue um this is you know it's a pretty cuttable card but it's a two drop and you'll probably play it if you're especially if you're in the blue deck um blue red deck so if you're not in that deck it's just kind of a throwaway card so in in the non blue red deck i'd probably give this like a c minus and in the blue red deck i'd probably give it a c so all right, next up we got Blow Your House Down for two and a red as a sorcery at common. Up to three target creatures can't block this turn. Destroy any of them that are walls. So I think this is like a sideboard card against, like, specifically if you see them play um, the Trebuchet, which we'll get to later, which is like a, is a wall that can ping you to death, especially in the Knight's deck. Um... Because you want to really be destroying creatures with this, hopefully, for three mana. Only This makes only three creatures not black, which maybe you can get their best creatures and then swing for the win. But other than that, it's pretty narrow, and I probably will never play this card. Um, except in that like fringe case, I think there's only two walls in the set. Both of which have annoying abilities, but um, this one I probably will cut more often than not. I'm giving it a D-. Next up, we got Bone Crusher Giant. It's two and a red for a creature giant at rare. It's an adventure card. Creature half says whenever Bone Crusher Giant becomes the target of a spell, Bone Crusher Giant deals two damage to that spell's controller, and it's a 4 3. And then Stomp, which is the adventure half, is one and a red for an instant adventure. Damage can't be prevented this turn. Stomp deals two damage to any target. So this is one of the best cards in the set, and um, what you really hope to open. Um, this one is just a, a sh you know an expensive shock, but still it's a shock that draws you a good creature card basically, which is a four three for three, which is you know really above rate with upside. Um, this will you know kill something small, clear the little guys out of the way, and then you can slam them with a four three, which is pretty solid for three. That's above rate for sure. And then if they have to try to kill it, they're going to be dealt another 2 damage, which is just everything Rid wants to do. Um, and then they're going to get into a position late game where they can't kill this because they're at 2 life. And they just have to chump block it for the rest of eternity. <clears throat> and hopefully kill it in combat. So this is just a really good card, one of the best cards in the set. Um, I'm giving this an A. Next up we got Brimstone Trebuchet, which for 2 and a red is a... Artifact creature wall at common. It's a 1-3. has defender and reach. Brimstone Trebuchet deals one damage 
or sorry, tap. It deals one damage to each opponent, and whenever a knight enters the battlefield under your control, untap Brimstone Trebuchet. So this one you really want in the knight's deck. It's a really good knight's payoff. Um, this has really won me games, and um, this will ping in for like five, six, seven damage a game, which really gets there. Plus, with the damage you're attacking with your knights, um, it just deals a ton of damage, and um, it's. I would give it a C plus because you want it in every knight's deck. It doesn't attack, but it blocks decently well. Um, it has reach, which and three toughness, which blocks a lot of flyers, so that's pretty good. A lot of the fairies have like one toughness, so this blocks them. And um, yeah, it's just a solid little creature that you want in your deck. So C plus for this guy. <clears throat> Next up, we got Burning Yard Trainer. Which for four and a red is a creature or human knight at uncommon. It's a 3-3. It has trample and haste. And when Burning Yard Trainer enters the battlefield, another target knight you control gets plus two plus two and gains trample and haste until end of turn. So this card is a beating. I mean, five mana for a 3-3 three three is not great, but it does have trample and haste. Plus it gives you plus two plus two to another knight. So hopefully you're in the knight's deck. Um, so, I mean, you're paying 5 mana for basically 5 five worth of stats, which is solid. And in the fail case, it's kind of a 5 mana 3-3 three, three with haste and trample, which I guess you could do worse, but it's pretty bad if you don't have another knight attacking in. Um, this will help you slam in for the last, you know, several points of damage. This has trample, and whatever you, you give the bonus to has trample. Which is solid. I don't think the haste really is going to come into play, but hey, late in the game when you can play two knights, you have enough mana for two knights, I mean, that could matter. So, this one I'm happy to have in every, every knight deck. Don't want too many of these because you want to keep your curse uh, fairly low. But, you know, it's a knight and you want as many of those as you can. So, this one I would give a C. Next up, we got Claim the Firstborn. It's a red for a sorcery at Uncommon. It says, gain control of target creature with converted mana cost 3 or less until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. So this one can really be a beating um, if you play it on like the last blocker and you have like two other attackers or whatever. You can crack in for, you know, several, a, you know, a fair amount of damage. Um, it can't take bigger stuff, but hey, it's only a red one red mana. Um, hopefully you can like sacrifice their creature afterwards. But if not, you can just crack in for an extra three damage or whatever. The, and um, cost three or less does hit a lot of creatures. Um, so in a really aggressive red deck, you might want this, but in a standard like in a regular like two color um, red deck with maybe green or whatever. You might not want this just because it's not very impactful. So um, it has a big upside, but again, then again, the floor is very low. So I'm going to give this one a C. And it's going to stay there. Otherwise, I, if, unless I see something better. Um, and, you know, Fling is in the format. So there you go. There's that. All right, next up we got Crystal Slipper. It's one and a red for an artifact equipment at common. Cool creature gets plus one, plus zero, oh, and has haste. Equip one. So this is kind of as cheap as they can make this effect. Um, plus one, plus zero, oh, and haste. Like, plus one, plus zero oh is nice, but really you, you want the haste. And this just adds an extra mana on each of your creatures. So if you want to have them with haste, then you got to pay an extra one, which is not great. And... Um, Plus one power does matter sometimes, but it's so low impact that it's probably not really worth playing this card. Um, yeah, this card uh, I probably would look to cut unless you really have good equipment payoffs, um, like Fervent Champion or something like that. So, um, yeah, I'd probably look to cut this one, and I'd probably give this a D plus because I'd probably try to cut it more often than not. Next up, we got Ember Cleave. It's four and two red for a legendary artifact equipment at Mythic Rare. Has flash, and it says this spell costs one less to cast for each attacking creature you control. When Ember Cleave enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Equip creature has plus one plus one and has double strike, 
and trample equip three so this card can really lead to huge blowouts ideally you're attacking with four creatures and paying two for this this team or battle rage is almost the same thing well it gives double strike and trample on a instant yeah i think it's an instant um but this one actually is plus one plus one as well so it's sort of like plus two plus two with the double strike um and it's a permanent boost um which is awesome and everything with double strike is a huge threat usually um this is a really slam dunk first pick for sure and i would be really excited to have this in my any aggressive red deck or any red deck for that matter um so yeah this this card i think is an a minus uh like it doesn't win you the game on its own if you don't have enough creatures to trigger the cost reduction thing then it's not going to be great but i'd still pay like four mana for it uh hopefully to have at least two t attacking creatures and out of nowhere you're just going to deal a ton of damage so uh yeah and if they know that you have this in your deck they're just going to be blocking you more often so um, so yeah, A- minus for Embercleave. Definitely a good card. Next up we got Emberth Paladin. It's three and a red for a creature human knight at common. Has haste, and it's a 4-1, and it has adamant. If at least three red mana was spent to cast this spell, Emberth Paladin enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. So this is one of the common knight cycle. Each uh, color has a common knight named after its castle and all of them have the adamant of uh, if you pay three mana of the respective color uh, they get a plus one plus one counter this one comes in as a five two haste for four with you know on an empty board that's a huge beating but if they have even one blocker i mean this is just gonna die so i mean it goes i would put it in your knight's deck to crack in for extra damage um but you're not too excited to have multiples of these so unless you're like a really aggressive deck um i guess you could do worse at four mana for a five two with haste and the haste is nice for sure um triggers all your knight payoff stuff so yeah i mean this is just like a c um you're happy to have one or two of these but probably not probably not more than that um so yeah c for emberth paladin next up we got emberth shield breaker one in a red for a creature human knight at uncommon it's one of the adventures uh, the creature half is just a vanilla 2-1, and the um, adventure half is called Battle Display. It's a red mana for a sorcery adventure, destroy target artifact. So this is kind of two mediocre cards stapled together. It's really nice to have that incidental um, artifact hate in your main deck, especially in the night deck. You can clear the way of any um, annoying, like... Uh, legendary artifacts if they happen to have that for only a single red mana which is pretty awesome so um, I would still put this in I'd probably main deck this card because it is a 2-1 for 2 uh, and it's a knight which matters so I, I give this a C plus just for the incidental artifact hate really which is nice to have in any deck so yeah C plus for this guy he's pretty good and I'd be happy to have uh, one or two of these in my deck Next up, we got Ferocity of the Wilds. It's two and a red for an enchantment at Uncommon. Attacking non-human creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and have Trample. So this is another non-human payoff. Um, I mean, that we've so far we've seen like so many knights and very few non-human stuff. I mean, there's this, there's Bone Crusher, the Brimstone Trebuchet, and the Wolverine, and we're like already what nine 12 cards in so i mean i've only seen two or three so i mean that's not great um i want to see this effect in knights not non-humans so this just it it doesn't do enough i mean for three mana i would rather play a, a good three drop creature and this one like you just have to take a turn off to hopefully have better combat steps with your non-knight aggressive decks which i don't see coming together too often but hey it could happen um this one i would say is kind of like a in the non-human deck you want it 
So I'd probably give it a C there. Otherwise, if you're not in the non-human deck and you only have a few non-humans in your deck, um, this is just like a D. So, so play it in your own risk. And hopefully you have enough non-humans. Or else it does nothing. Next up, we got Fervent Champion. It's for a red. It's a creature human knight at rare. It's a 1-1. One, one. Has first strike and haste. Whenever Fervent Champion attacks, another target attacking knight you control gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. Equip abilities you activate that target Fervent Champion cost 3 less to activate. So this is uh, Javier Dominguez's card. He won the uh, World Championship in 2018, which is pretty cool. They gave him a card. Which I think is pretty cool that they brought that back. So this is a probably the best one drop in standard for red decks. Just has every ability ever on a one drop. It's nuts. Boosts your other knights. Has first strike. Has haste. I mean, this will just crack in for a few damage while you're setting up your other knights. And so your opponent essentially starts the game with 17 or 16 life. Uh, before they can even do anything, especially on the play, like this is exactly what you want. Um, just a really good one drop in in the night deck. So if I were to pack one, pick one, this I'd hope to be in a really aggressive like night deck. Um, and not really any other deck because it's kind of not very impactful otherwise outside the night deck. I mean, you could be in like an equipment deck if you have the Ember Cleave, but that's not very likely. Um, <clears throat> so this one, I would really want it in the night deck. So in that deck, I'd give it a B minus. Uh, no, I'd give it a B for the night deck. And then um, otherwise, it's kind of like a C. Next up, we got Fires of Invention. It's it's three and a red for an enchantment at rare. It says you can cast spells only during your turn, and you can cast no more than two spells each turn. And it says, you may cast spells with converted mana costs less than or equal to the number of lands you control without paying their mana costs. So this is, has a horrible drawback, obviously, but the payoff is there. Like, you get to pay, pay double mana, basically. If you have fi five lands the next turn you play this, or the next turn that you have this, then you play two five drops, which is totally nuts plus if you play this on turn four you can you can play another four drop it just adds so much mana to your mana pool um hopefully you're hitting your land drops but this is just really good and has to be dealt with or you just lose because they, they get such so much mana advantage off of it that it's nuts um i mean you don't really want this in the blue red like draw extra cards deck because you can't draw cards on their turn since you can't play spells. Unless you have abilities. And yeah, maybe you do want in that deck. I don't know. Um, but this just goes in every red deck that ever from here to the end of time, I think. This is going to see a ton of standard play, hopefully, because I really like the card. So this is just one of those red enchantments that kind of like Experimental Frenzy in, uh, in uh, Guilds of Ravnica which um, looks kind of bad, but when you play with it, I think this plays very well. So this one, I, I would give it a B. Um, it's You don't need it in your deck, but it does power it up a lot. So I'd give it a B. Next up, we got Fling. For one and a ren, it's an instant. At common, it's an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature. Fling deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to any target. So... This is going to be like a, a dead card in your hand for a lot of the a lot of the game, unless it's killing your opponent. Because hopefully you have like a four or five power guy that you can just sack to just deal them the last points of damage, which is ideally what you're doing with this card. You don't really want to be targeting your opponent's creature because you're two for one in yourself. But if you absolutely have to kill something of theirs, I guess you could do worse. Um, not really though, because you, you're two for one in yourself. So, yeah, it's pretty bad. I don't think fling is great and limited unless you're maybe stealing your opponent's creature somehow and then, you know, sacrificing them. So, um, and black red kind of wants to sacrifice its own stuff or its opponent's stuff. So, if you're in that deck, in the black red deck, um, you could run this as a sack outlet and an extra damage. 
spell, but I'm not too excited about it. I'm giving this a D. Next up, we got Iron Craig Feet. Um, it's one and three red for a sorcery at rare. It says add seven red mana. You can cast only one more spell this turn. So this spell basically does nothing, and I would only play this if I had that Sundering Stroke, I think it's called, where it deal, where if you pay your seven red mana, you can you get the, a bonus effect for it. But I would not play this card in limited. Like, yeah, you can play a seven drop, but which could get you far ahead. But how often you're going to have this card and your high cost card in your hand at the same time? So I would be very wary of playing this in my deck. It's kind of a dead card for a lot of the time, and it even limits you to only playing one card with your seven mana. So um, it's very limiting, and I would avoid it at all costs. And I'd be very unhappy if this was my pack one uh, rare. So this one, I believe, is just an F. Next up, we got Iron Craig Pyromancer. It's two and a red for a creature human wizard at rare. It's an 04. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, Iron Craig Pyromancer deals three damage to any target. So this is really the payoff you want in that blue-red uh, draw second card uh, deck. And this just pings everything um, for three, or it bolts everything for three, which is really good. Hopefully you're triggering it every single turn. You want it both on your turn by drawing one card and on your opponent's turn by drawing two cards. And then this just takes over the game at that point. Um, and limited, it's not too hard to draw extra cards. There's like a red, uh, like Merchant of the Veil, he draws you cards. Um, there's that two mana, like, Tormenting Voice. I forget what it's called. It's like, it starts with a T, or it's T. Um, Thrill of Possibility, this one draws you two cards. So, I mean, there, there are ways to trigger it in red, and in blue you draw a lot of cards, so hopefully you're you know, procking this fairly often. Um, and you just have to kind of build your deck around this, but it's really worth it. It's a good build around. Um, this one, I would give a B, a build around B too. And if you're not drawing extra cards and you shouldn't put this in your deck. So if you're not drawing extra cards, I would give this a, I mean, three mana for an 04 essentially is kind of just like a D minus. So I, I probably wouldn't play it in your deck otherwise but yeah so b in that deck and d minus otherwise next up we got joust one in a red is a sorcery at uncommon choose target creature you control and target creature you don't control the creature you control gets plus two plus one until end of turn if it's a knight then those creatures fight so one in a red for fight and a bonus to knights you really want this in the knight deck uh, this is good knight removal I mean, it's, it's good removal if you're in the night deck. Otherwise, it's just like a one-on-one -on -one fight for two mana. So that's not terrible, and hopefully your creature's better, uh, bigger and will survive. But if your creature dies and you're killing their best thing, then that's not terrible. Most if you're in the night deck, um, you kill their thing, and then you can crack in for two extra damage, which is decent. Um, but yeah, so I like Joust, especially in the night deck. So I'm giving this one a C+, and you probably want it in every red deck, basically basically next up we got mad ratter three in a red for a creature goblin uncommon it's a one two and whenever you draw your second card each turn create two one one black rat creature tokens so this is four mana for a one two which is awful but hopefully you're in the blue red draw extra cards deck where you'll just make two one ones rats every turn um which would be awesome and then maybe you have black for that rare uh, uh rat piper guy who can steal stuff when if you have three rats or whatever so um i mean i can see you building around this but um and between this and the pyromancer i think i'd rather have the pyromancer because it just deals three damage automatically whereas this one just gives you two rats but this one i mean you're creating extra chump blockers every turn which is which is maddening to deal with um for your, their non-trample creatures or their non-flying creatures so in the right matchup this can really gum up the board and help you win the long game 
But in the red deck, do you really want to be going to the long game? Probably not. Red is the color of trying to get there early, so... Um, but this does give you chump blockers forever, so... In the draw extra cards deck, uh, or draw your second card deck, I'd give this... This is probably one of the better payoffs, so... I'd give it a B in that deck, but otherwise it's just awful, so I'd give... And I would never play it unless you're drawing more cards, so I'd give it an F otherwise. Next up, we got Merchant of the Veil. It's two and a red for a creature human peasant at common. The cre it's an adventure, and um, the creature half is a 2-3. Two, two and a red, discard a card, and draw a card. And the instant half is Haggle. For a red, it's an instant adventure. You may discard a card if you do draw a card. So, um, this is kind of like the new... Um, uh, what's it called? The... Faithless Looting, sorry. <laughs> it's like a new Faithless Looting. It's also an instant, which is sweet, but it only discards one card and then draws a card. So it's like, it's rummaging instead of looting, which is not as good. But hey, it's only a red mana, and then you get a creature later anyway, so you're not really losing any cards, which is pretty nice. And then once this is on the field, um, it's really good in that blue-red uh, draw your second card deck. Because you just keep discarding your lands or whatever you don't need and drawing extra cards, which is nice. Um, it gives you like a three mana redraw, which is not bad at all. This is a common. I think this should should have been a, an uncommon just how for how good like that disc that creature's ability is. So um, you want this in most of your red decks. Unfortunately, it's not a knight. It's a peasant, but. Um, I'll forgive it for that because it's just a pretty strong card. So, um, this one I think is like a eh, probably like a, a B minus, eh, C plus to B minus, somewhere in the middle there. I, I'll say I'll say B minus because I just like the card so much, and um, it's sort of like two cards for the price of one, which is not bad. So B minus for Merchant of the Veil. Vale. <clears throat> Next up we got Ogre Errant. It's three and a red for a creature Ogre Knight at Common, it's a 3-4. Whenever Ogre Errant attacks, another target attacking Knight gains a menace until end of turn. This is a solid, like, stout body in the uh, Knight's deck. You could also put it in the non-human deck, I guess, because since it's not human. Um, and the flavor text is kind of funny, if you want to read that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it just gives your Knight's menace, which is solid. They need three blockers whenever this thing attacks. If, if you have another knight, which is pretty good and helps get your guys through. So they just kind of have to kill this or they're just going to run out of blockers. And 3-4 Rumble is pretty good. I'm um, pretty happy to have this in every knight deck. Maybe two, even two copies of this is, would not be bad. Um, so, yeah, over here it's very solid. I'll give it a C+. Plus. Next up, we got Opportunistic Dragon. It's 2 and 2 red for a creature dragon at rare. It's a 4-3 has flying, and when opportunistic an opportunistic dragon enters the battlefield, choose target human or artifact and opponent controls. For as long as opportunistic dragon remains on the battlefield, gain control of that permanent. It loses all abilities, and it can't attack or block. So this is sort of like red removal. I mean, if they have a human, it's creature removal, and if they have like a good artifact, then it's artifact removal. It's essentially removal until they can kill it. It's sort of like a red oblivion ring. Um, so this is just solid. It's four mana for a four three flyer, which is pretty good and limited. And um, you're you're pretty excited to have this in any red deck, especially like the non human deck, but really any red deck you want. To, you'll you'll just slam this in there. Um, so this one I would give a. It's, it's a big body and it's removal ish, like removal light. So this kind of gets a B. So, yeah, I think B for Opportunistic Dragon, pretty solid, and hopefully the 3 Toughness does not get come back to bite it, because 3 Toughness is pretty low, um, but if it survives, it just kills your opponent, so. And there's not too much flying in the set, outside of, like, blue, uh, so, you know, you're in a pretty good spot if you can slam an Opportunistic Dragon, so, yeah, I'll give it a B. Next up, we got Raging Red Cat for a 2 and a red is a... Creature Goblin Knight at Common. It's a 1-2 and it has double strike. So this is good 
to pump, especially with like Fervent Champion or the Red White like Night Lord. This loves. Um, if you have any either of those or any other way to pump it with whatever else you you can muster, um, this just goes up in value. It's a knight, which is awesome. It's not a human, which is good for the non-human deck. And double strike is just a powerful ability. So for it's essentially a 2-3, but if you pump it, it just gets better from there. So yeah, it's a solid card. I'd give it a C. Next up, we got Red Cap Melee. At a, for a red, is an instant at Uncommon. Um, red Cap Melee deals 4 damage to target creature or planeswalker. If a non-red permanent is dealt damage this way, you sacrifice a land. So I don't really care that you have to sack a land. This is one mana for four damage to a creature or planeswalker, which is awesome. Uh, if, if it's red, then it's just a bonus, but I would still play it on a white creature or a red black creature or whatever. Um, or or a planeswalker. If they if this if your opponent has a Garrick or an Elko, this just can kill them if you've been able to uh, damage them at least a little bit. So this card is awesome. It's red for four damage to to a thing. So that's solid. You want it in every red deck. I would main board it even though it's technically a a, re, a red hate card. But second to land isn't horrible if you kill their best thing. So um, this is I would say a B minus. Second land can matter, and you don't want to do it too early. But if it's late game, like you know, you don't mind sacking a land or two so here and there. So, yeah, red cap melee is solid. I would put it in all your red decks. Next up, we got red cap raiders. It's two and a red for a creature, goblin warrior at common. It's a three two. Whenever red cap raiders attacks, you may tap and untap non-human creature you control. If you do, red cap raider gets plus one plus one and gains trample until end of turn. This you want you want to be in the non-human deck. Or you're just playing a vanilla 3-2 three, for 3, which is not great. It's filler at best, which is like a D. But if you're in the non-human deck, it gets plus 1, plus 1 and trample. So it's a 4-3 to trample, which is not bad. Um, but I don't really want to tap my other non-humans. I want to attack with them. And it's a little awkward. Give this a little boost for at the cost of not being able to attack with something else. Eh. But it could come in clutch if you need to do a little bit of trampling to end the game so this this could matter but um i look to probably cut this outside of the non-human deck so this one i would give a c in the non-human deck and like a d plus in a non non-human deck all right next up we got rimrock knight it's one in a red for a creature dwarf knight at common the creature half of this adventure card is 3-1, three, 3 power, 1 toughness, and it says uh, Rimrock Knight can't block. And then the uh, adventure half is Boulder Rush for a red. It's an instant adventure target creature gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. So this might be the, like, the worst adventure because plus 2, plus 0... Yes, it can punch in two more damage, but it doesn't help your creature survive. I mean, it is for one red mana, and you get a 3-1. That's not bad. The fact that it can't block is pretty bad. Um, you want your 3-1s to be able to trade no matter what. So, the fact that it can't block is pretty bad. But it's a two-mana 3-1, which does, you know, punish your opponent for stumbling for sure. So, this one I think is just a C, and... It's a knight for when that matters, so yeah, C for Remrock Knight. Next up, we got Robber of the Rich. It's one and a red for a creature, human, archer, rogue, and mythic rare. It has reach and haste. It's a 2 2. Whenever Robber of the Rich attacks, if defending player has more cards in hand than you, exile the top card of their library. During any turn you attacked with a rogue, you may cast that card, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. Um, so it's a 2-2 two, two for 2 with haste, with reach for, for what that's worth. Since it's an archer, I guess it gets reach. And then hopefully if you're like on the play and you've been playing a 1-drop and then this, you're going to have fewer cards so in hand, so um, you can 
often get a card off of this, hopefully. Um, and if not, it's just a two mana two two with haste, which you know it's playable, but I'm not terribly excited about it. So you kind of have to keep this alive, but it's only a two two. Um, that's not great for mythic rare. I kind of want more than this than like 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 a conditional card draw out of your opponent's deck. But stealing your opponent's best cards can be awesome. Uh, but this isn't terribly exciting, and I'm kind of uh, disappointed in this like Robin Hood-esque card. But, I mean, it's not bad. It's 2 mana for a 2-2 haste, and that's not bad. So I would give this like a C+, plus, I think. Next up, we got Scorching Dragonfire. It's 1 in a red for an instant at common. Scorching Dragonfire deals 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker. If that creature or planeswalker would die this turn, exile it instead. So I think this is really good. Um, 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker for 2 mana is solid, plus exiles, which is all you want. You'll play this in every red deck, never cut it. You play as many as you get. I would play 4 of them if I got 4. Which I think is impossible, but uh, could happen. Um, so this one is going to go fast out of the pack, and hopefully you can pick up a few in your in all of your red decks because it's just really good removal. So this one I would give a B. Next up we got Searing Barrage. It's four and a red for an instant. A common it deals five damage to target creature, and adamant if at least three red mana was spent to cast a spell. Syrian Barrage deals 3 damage to that creature's controller. So this does a ton of damage. 5 damage to a creature and 3 damage to the opponent. That's 8 total damage for 5 mana. That's pretty darn good. I'd put this in every red deck. Um, you don't want too many since it is 5 mana, but this kills a lot of stuff. Um, and I'd be pretty happy to have this. Plus it's an instant, which is awesome. And this could just kill your opponent with the with the last three damage. So keep an eye out for this card. I'd give it a B as well. Next up, we got seven dwarves. It's one in a red for a creature dwarf at common. It's a two-two. Seven dwarves gets plus one plus one for each other creature named seven dwarves you control. A deck can have up to seven cards named seven dwarves. What's funny about that second ability is it actually limits how many dwarves you can have. Seven dwarves you can have in your deck because in limited. You can have as many of any card as you want, uh, but this one you can only have seven. <laughs> now, why would you want more than that? I don't know, but hey, if you, I mean, <laughs> it's in the realm of possibility for that coming up. Probably not, but hey, and you want this one in multiples because two mana for a two two is with no other text is not exciting, and uh, two mana for a three three is pretty good. So you want as many of these as you can get um, if you are going for this strategy. But if you only, if you only have one or maybe two, I probably wouldn't play it. So I'd give a D, eh, D plus for that marginal upside. So D plus for seven doors. Next up we got Skull Knocker Ogre. <laughs> for three and a red, it's a creature ogre at uncommon. It's a four three. Whenever Skullknocker Ogre deals damage to an opponent, that player discards a card at random. If the player does, they draw a card. So it causes them to discard a card at random, but they draw a card. So that can be kind of disruptive and ruin their plans. Um, hopefully you can nail their best creature, but I would not count on this getting exactly what you want out of their hand. Um, 4 mana for a 4 3 is decent. Um, and the ability is kind of like weird and might actually end up helping your opponent. So I'd be wary of this and it's like a C probably, but this, I'm not very excited about this. It's not a knight. It is a non-human for when you're in the non-human deck. So there's that. Um, they draw. Yeah, I don't know. It's just helping your opponent ch like change up their hand. I don't think it's very good, so. But it's a 4 mana 4 or 3, so I'd give it a C. Next up, we got Slaying Fire. For 2 and a red, it's an instant at uncommon. Seems like red gets all like instant removal on this set. So for the next card here, uh, which is pretty good for red, so that, that's promising for red. 
Sweet art here. Anyway, sorry. Sl Slaying Fire is 2 in a red for an instant uncommon. Slaying Fire deals 3 damage to any target. Adamant, if at least 3 red mana was spent to cast a spell, it deals 4 damage instead. So this card is even better than the, uh, what was it called? Scorching Dragonfire, because for 3 mana, yeah, you, only, you get the same amount of damage for for this uh, one more cost, but it can hit anything, any target, and it can even deal four damage if you if you adamant it, which for four damage to any target for three mana is exceptional, and will just end up killing your opponent if, if this is uh, if you're near the end of the game and you top deck this. So this is a really solid card. I'd give it a B plus. Um, it's a solid first pick, and I'm looking, definitely be looking to play it if you're in red. Next up, we got Sundering Stroke. It's six in a red for a sorcery at rare. Sundering Stroke deals seven damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three targets. If at least seven red mana was spent to cast a spell, instead Sundering Stroke deals seven damage to each of those permanents and or players. So it's seven mana, which is bad. And you might not ever get to that. Um, but it does sort of board wipe them. It, you can kill up to three things. Or you can just dome them for seven. Um, and if you do spend seven red mana and like you're in the mono red deck or something. Uh, you can just dome them for seven and kill two other creatures. Seven damage pretty much kills everything. Except for like a maybe a huge beanstalk giant or something. But... Uh, it's a, it's a solid card, I think, but seven mana holds it back, so it does, this doesn't get anything over a C plus, because you'll just sometimes be unable to play it, so and it just rots in your hand while you have five lands or whatever. So, so C plus for Sundering Stroke, with the keeping in mind that it could win you the game. Uh, Sir Kara the Bold is next, three and two red for a legendary creature, Human Knight at. Uncommon, it's a 3-3. Whenever Sir Kara, the Bold, or an instant or sorcery spell you control deals damage to a player, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. And then it has tap, Sir Kara deals one damage to any target. So at minimum, you're going to be able to ping them and then basically draw a card. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, uh, it's a knight as well, a red knight, so that's good. 3-3 three, three for 5 is not exciting, but if you can repeatedly like get in with this or deal them 1 damage, then you're then now we're talking. So, um, And if you're like in a red burn deck with a lot of slaying fires and stuff, like this really gets you there. So yeah, it'll just, it'll just let you keep playing the top card of your library. Because let's see, you have 6 mana. You ping them for 1. You reveal a slaying fire, you ping him again for four damage, and then you reveal another card. So you can draw, can, could uh, hypothetically uh, draw you more than just one card. So uh, that's pretty good. So I do like this card. Um, wish it was bigger for five mana, but it's all right, I guess. Um, so I think this one's like a B minus. Um, you could first pick it in a bad pack, but. I'd probably try to get some removal over it. Um, yeah, I'd probably pick removal over this. Because 5 mana is kind of a lot for like a red deck and limited. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say a B- minus for Sir Kara. Next up, we got Thrill of Possibility. It's 1 in a red for an instant at common. Has an additional cost to cast this spell. Discard a card. Draw two cards. So this is just a strictly better uh, Tormenting Voice, which was... The same exact thing, but a sorcery. So um, you can tr you can trigger your draw two cards um, on their turn, uh, which is awesome. Which uh, so this is really good in that deck, and otherwise it can help fix your draw. Like let's say you have enough lands, and then you draw a land, and you have this in your hand. You can just pitch your land, and then draw two fresh cards, which is solid. But top decking this feels awful because you just can't play it. Um, but once you draw another card, uh, then you could play it. But eh, 
So it's it's pretty good in the draw two card or draw a second card deck. Um, otherwise, I'd you know you can probably cut this. So in that deck, I would give it a C, and otherwise, I'd probably give it a C minus. Next up, we got Torbrand Thane of Red Fell. It's one and three red for a two four. It's a legendary creature, dwarf noble at rare. It says if a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. <coughs> Excuse me. So you want this in every red deck, and hopefully you have a lot of mountains in your deck, like hopefully like like not from nine to eleven at least. Uh, you want to be able to play it by turn four, like you need three reds, so it could be hard for some limited decks to do, but I would still play it um, in any red deck because just doing two extra damage is just awesome. This is going to be a really good standard card with that Cavalcade deck, but we're talking about limited here, and this just gives all your red stuff plus two plus O, oh, and uh, it's just really solid because of that. Um, I would. This is a slam dunk first pick. One of the best red cards for sure. So this one I would give a B plus to because you just force it in and you red deck. You can. Um, obviously impossible to splash, but it's really solid. Next up we got Weaselback Red Cap. This one is a red for a creature Goblin Knight at common. It says one in red Weaselback. Red cap gets plus two plus zero until end of turn, and it's a one one. So this card is almost exactly uh, Goblin Banneret from Guilds of Ravnica, which was a pretty good card. Um, it does the same thing except it has Mentor, uh, which gives a plus one plus one counter to it. another attacking creature with lesser power. So this one can trade up. I mean, if you have four mana open and you ha they have like a five toughness creature like. Are they, they're probably not going to block. Trade their four mana card for a one mana card feels awful. So this thing can trade up. Also, it's a knight. Also, it's a non human. So it goes in those decks, which is solid. Plus, the art is kind of hilarious because it's just it's a goblin riding a weasel. It's, it's spot on for what goblins are doing. Um, so, this card, like, it's not very impactful, but it could trade up if you pay enough mana. So I'd, I'd probably just give this one a C. Um, you'll play it, but you might want to cut it as well. All right, that's the last of the red cards. Um, next up, we're going to look at all the green cards in Throne of Eldraine. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.